Mr. Charles Bronckhart owns one of the finest crowing cocks in Belgium. Bartholomew is a local champion, and like all the best cocks around here, he's up bright and early every Sunday morning for some exercise before his crowing power is put to the test. Today, Mr. Bronckhart is taking Bartholomew and Cedric, his second string bird, to town. So first, he must put them in one of these special little boxes. It's not an easy job when a cock has a mind of his own, but soon Cedric and Bartholomew are settled down and ready to go. How long have you been uh, training cocks to, uh, to sing? Oh, do you ask me my experience or yeah, yeah. my experience, experience in the cocks? Yeah. Oh, 15 years, 15 years experience. Yeah. What do you like about cock, uh, the cock competition? Oh, because it's a, it's a pleasure, it is a, uh, a plaisir sain. How do you translate it? It's a healthy pleasure for men, you understand? It's 8 a.m. as Mr. Bronckhart, a retired office clerk, sets off with Bartholomew and Cedric down the main street of Amay, a small town in southeast Belgium. Over the past 50 years, Amay has become the most important centre for crowing cocks in Belgium. It's estimated that the cock population at present stands at over 300. In Amay, people regard their cocks with the same affection as millions fancy pigeons in Britain. There's a cock at the bottom of nearly every garden. Now, it's not that the Amayans are particularly inspired by the sight of a strutting rooster. It's not that they adore eating eggs. Indeed, there are few hens in Amay, so the cocks lead frugal lives. And even their qualities as pets tend to be somewhat obscure. There's another reason why every Sunday morning the men of the town carry their cocks to this cafe for the main social event of the week. Inside, it's revealed that the Amayans' interest in cocks revolves around another local obsession, gambling. While the participants take a back seat for a while, their owners place bets to gamble on which birds will become the top cocks of the day. This is the start of the weekly Amay Cock Crowing Contest, a competition which hasn't yet caught on outside Belgium, but which is run here with the full approval of the government. It receives an 8% gambling tax from each bet taken by the AMA Cock Crowing Committee, the sports ruling body. Naturally, Mr. Bronckhart is backing Bartholomew and Cedric. He has to predict how many cockadoodle-doos the birds will manage in an hour. Today, he's gambling that Bartholomew will be good for 40 crows and Cedric for only 30. If his guess is correct, he could win about 40 pounds, and a jackpot prize of up to 100 pounds will go to the cock which crows more times than any other. Just before nine o'clock, the 100 cocks competing today are carried to the crowing stands behind the cafe. They were built at the town's expense and probably offer the best crowing facilities in Belgium. At exactly three minutes to nine, the president of the AMA Cock Crowing Committee gives a sharp toot on his horn. The owners now have three minutes to take their cocks out of the boxes and put them in the crowing stands. At nine on the dot, the president toots again. The contest is underway. It must be admitted that cock crowing is not really a spectator sport. Through years of match play experience, owners have discovered that cocks won't crow in front of a crowd. So spectators must stand behind a huge fence and watch the cocks through eye holes. 
Talking is strictly forbidden, for the cocks find noise distracting too. In front of each competing cock sits a referee who marks down each crow on a scorecard. The referees are hidden behind barriers cunningly erected so that they can observe the cocks, but the cocks cannot see them. Today, alas, the number of competing cocks in Belgium is decreasing. But they still remember the golden years about ten years ago. They remember the award-winning competitive cock from Britain, which carried away all the prizes with 150 crows. Today, these cocks will be expected to crow about 50 times during the course of one competition. Halfway through the one-hour contest, it's becoming clear that Bartholomew, crowing today in box 50, is leading by a short head from Albert, a game little cock owned by the only lady present, who's now anxiously wondering if Albert can pull off a surprise victory. At this stage, owners can change their bets, and quite a few plug for cocks with less crows to their credit, for often the early leaders run short of puff in the second half and are out crowed in the last few minutes. As the stopwatches register that the contest has seconds to go, it's now a photo finish between a rank outsider crowing in box 57 and Bartholomew, now desperately tired after nearly 50 crows to his credit. Somehow, the favourite manages to find a couple of final crows held in reserve. When the president ends the contest, Bartholomew has won by an inch. For the losers, it is time for recrimination and perhaps a reassessment about a cock's entire future in the sport. But some, like Albert, have proved their match-crowing potential. A cock's professional career starts when he's a two-year-old, like Albert. He'll reach his peak form next year and compete regularly until his crowing days are over, perhaps in ten years' time. You're the only woman here today. Is it an unusual... Is it very unusual for a woman to... Uh... Oh, yes! You see, from uh, coming here, uh, yeah, as uh, from nine o'clock to ten o'clock, uh, an inscription. It's very, very. <laughs> I like it. So, what is it that you like about uh, about the cocks? The regularity of a cock. I like. It. How, how do you mean the regularity? Uh, for instance, a cock uh, which sings regularly the same. Hmm? After the first quarter of hour, after the first half time, after the, the, the three uh, quarters, you understand? Yeah. Evidently, that's always the result who, who tells. That's always the result which is important. Eh? And if, the, if your cock uh, didn't uh, sing regularly but reaches the um, required limit as nearly as possible, you are well placed to get a, a beautiful prize, you understand? <laughs> The morning ends back in the cafe for the payout when winning owners like Mr. Bronkhart and punters who bet on Bartholomew collect their prize money. Outside, less successful cocks like this one, in disgrace for managing only two crows an hour, are sold off at a traditional cock crowing lottery. The man who draws a winning card gets the cock, its owner gets the losing bets. Meanwhile, Mr. Bronkhart has one last ritual to perform. He's presented with a paper flower for his wife, as in cock-crowing circles, a flower is a symbol of victory. It is, of course, very unfair to Bartholomew, who's caught up in a vicious circle. He crows to attract a hen, and wouldn't crow so much if he found one. That dooms him to a bachelor life, which is hardly worth crowing about. 